Okay. Card reader says I got a 1406 EGR valve issue. So what does that mean? Well, some time ago I had an 88 Blazer, which finally occurred to me what all the codes mean. These engines have become so reliable that if you get a code, basically what you do is whatever that code has to do with, if it says some problem with the crankshaft sensor or whatever, EGR valve issue, mass airflow, now mass airflow, things like that, you can clean them. But something like this, EGR problem, the easiest thing to do is just replace the sensor. In this case, the EGR valve. Especially in something like this. It's got over 330,000 miles on it. Here's what the EGR valve looks like. And you can tell. It's got some mileage on it. So, you cannot lose by replacing old parts on an old vehicle. As a beginning step. If you still got a problem after that. Then you can further try to troubleshoot it. But in my case, every time I've ever run into anything like this, I change the sensor or the issue with the problem, and it goes away. There's with the EGR valve. There's my nice new pretty one, which I will show you how to do. It's right there. It's simple. It's got one harness on it. Pull the little side clip. Two 10 millimeter headed bolts, which I use a long extension. I keep a long magnet, as you will see. I do stuff a rag down in the next to it down there when I'm putting the other one back in so that uh, in case that new gasket falls in there the bolts or something it won't go anywhere so that's what we're going to do it's simple uh, with the discounts that I get because uh, advanced where they call them uh, speed perks points I just went with the cheap the cheapest car quest at uh, Advance Auto Parts. These things, uh, I forget, end up running me $72. So somewhere, I don't know, $79, 80, 80 bucks or something for it. But if it's true, got 300,000 miles out, I certainly can't argue about that. And it looks kind of like crap. So that's what we're going to do. The camera angle is a little weird when I do it from the left over here pointing at it, but that's why I wanted to show you exactly where it is. It's right out front. Nice and easy to get that. This really, literally, if you just, once you bring the tools out, you can do this in like five minutes. It's a piece of cake. There we go. Okay, EGR valve. Where is it? Well, it's right there in the front. I think I should do that already. So I got my little tripod here and see if I can keep an eye on that. And so what we got is a little connector right here. Pull up on that little sucker. And that plug pulls up. Let's pull up on that. And it's got two 10 millimeter headed bolts on either side of it. Basically like that. Sits in there apparently like that. So where am I? Sits in there like that. Should be pretty easy. However, before I proceed, I'm going to grab my little magnet because looks like those might fall out of there. Okay, greatest telescopic magnet in the world. Where am I? Stretches all the way out. So when I get down, that bolt's going to come out of there. I can grab with the magnet. I might even be able to put it back in there that way. Careful, there's a little bracket right there that's not quite come out yet.
sekolah bau That one's probably going to be the tricky one. Hitting on the harness. As you can see, I'm using a long extension so I can do it from out here. With a 10 millimeter deep socket. Because those are the ones that I have access to. All right. Well, I don't know what happened there. My camera shut off. I think my batteries are going to whatever. Anyway, there's the gasket came right off. There's the valve. I hope it's disgusting and doesn't work and is what my problem is. Looks uh, a bit on the old side, you know. I don't know if that's got 331,000 miles on it or not, but... We have a new one, so... In this case, since the gasket came right off... Uh, yeah, it's getting time to get a new battery, a new camera, one or the other, maybe both. Anyway, there's what the pad looks like. Old gasket, nice new gasket, it's kind of beat up. Asbestos, don't breathe that in. New valve, nice and pretty. Hopefully that's my issue. So the trick is gonna be, get the gasket down there, get this thing in there. They, you know, one, who has it, 1A Auto, one of those guys talks about uh, taping put a little piece of tape on there hold on there but I'm gonna probably set it in there because I'm stubborn I think it goes in there like that yep and then I'm gonna put a bolt I'll show you what I'm gonna do you'll see it in action I'm gonna take one of the bolts put it in the hole I'm going to lower this in with the socket on top of it and lower it in there. Hopefully that bolt will line it up. Let's see if I can get that gasket to stay put. Maybe I have to do it with one hand. Do it the other side. If not, the gasket's going to fall. i have to think about that maybe here. Get this little thing in position. Well, at least you know what I'm going to try to do. Let's see, should I do something about gluing it up in there or whatever? Or will this gasket stick on the bolts? Sometimes the holes will be small enough where it'll actually hold the gasket. In case. I stick a rag down in there where the gasket won't fall. Alright, we're gonna try it. It's the worst that could happen, huh? So I'm gonna put my socket on there. Okay, well, I don't have it lined up, but there I do. Well, breeze, if you please.
And that's down there, but that doesn't want to go in the hole. So that. I don't have it quite lined up. We'll get that one in there. Pull that out of the way. It's not quite a straight shot with these bolts. it goes in get started first it doesn't feel right all right there we go I like to get them going by hand that way you make sure they're started straight you don't go then you pull it out and you try again That's boring so as soon as I get that one going I'll come back all right so what I ended up doing is snugging this back one down so that it was flat and then loosen it just a little bit and then getting this fold in there that way it has to kind of like point in this direction it's a little non straight and then I got it to where I'm not really straight on it but now I can do it by hand it kept hanging up and you don't want to force it with a ratchet because then you cross thread it and then you might be screwed a lot of times the only way you know you got it in the hole correctly is if you can put it in by hand so before I tighten it up I put a little light on there make sure my gasket is in place where it belongs looks good now I'll snug them both up. Snug that one. Snug that one. Looks like it's in there nice and flat. Tighten that one. Tighten that one. A little more. Make sure there's specs on this. I was thinking about eh, 25 pounds probably. Like a spark plug. That's in there. Hook your connector back up. Get that nice click. And that's that for the replacement. Now I'm going to go in there, start this thing up. Well, actually, I got to turn the ignition on, erase the codes, and then fire it up. And we'll still have those five oxygen sensor codes because I don't think I have any oxygen sensors I got head pipes right to the exhaust pipes while the tone so in my case well, let's go uh, clear the codes and see if that took care of at least that problem okay let's see what happens Well, so far so good. Of course, that doesn't tell me anything because this is the way it normally sounds, pretty much. All right, let's run our code scanner. I cleared the codes already. Let's see, read codes. Let's see if it'll do it this quickly. I may have to actually drive it. No codes found. Now that's kind of weird because. Uh, with no oxygen sensors. Well, I hope that took care of it. It looks like it's so far. We'll have to uh, leave this thing hooked up and go drive it around a little bit and then uh, double check it. That'll be hilarious if that took care of all the codes, even the oxygen sensor ones. But. I hope that's it because I got some uh, driving to do tomorrow so I will have to go drive this thing a little bit and then uh, we'll see what happens so far so good and then the last thing to do is to since this is a lifetime warranty 
I make copies of the receipts and write on that, staple the receipt to the copy, put that in my file, make note of it in my logbook, which I have on my computer, and write right on the uh, big piece of paper, lifetime warranty. I'll put the uh, mileage, which is 331.183.8, and today's date. So uh, when I go after EGR problems uh, 10 years from now, I can get another one free. Yeehaw! All right, there we go. Good luck. If this is your problem, hope it cures yours too.